Hello, it's Jess and I'm today for my Creative HE course homework. I'm looking at uh, games and learning and uh, looking at some of the things we do within my current situation at the University of Huddersfield. Um, I'm quite lucky in that I arrived um, to work at university that had already identified quite a lot of uh, examples where they could introduce game-based learning into the teaching uh, within the libraries. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I use and my colleagues use in their classes, but also um, looking at the wider way, range of why uh, we use games within library learning and, and what benefit they can have for the students. So first of all, uh, I've mentioned it before in a previous video, my favourite game to use for the students is called Seek. It's a card game. It's quite simple to play. Uh, you play um, each other. Um, around a table and it can be up to six players. It takes a lot longer to play if there are six of you. You start off with two cards. Um, there are two kinds of cards. You've got your green play cards and you've also got wild cards and the wild card use becomes apparent throughout the game. And on the back of the cards there are questions um, such as this one and you can ask each other the questions. If the person you're asking the question gets gets it right, they get points. If they don't, you get points. And you burn a card and go on. So for example, this question here, um, which of the following is a primary source of information, song lyrics, answers to a questionnaire, data from a scientific experiment, or D, all of the above? The answer will be all of the above. And these questions um, include multiple choice. There's also ones, these are the students' favorite ones, uh, that they always moan about afterwards. What are the most relevant terms in this research question? Give an overview of the impacts of climate change in the Gulf of Mexico region, water cycle, and the keywords, relevant terms, keywords, whatever you want to call them would be, climate change, Gulf of Me Mexico, water cycle. So the students then are looking to find the key terms within questions that may not be uh, specific specific to their subject. In fact, sometimes it's better if they're not specific to their subject because it stops them then going on and going, oh, I can write my dissertation about that then. And it makes you think about the um, information skills as a whole rather than looking at for specific things. Good things about SEEK, mostly it all uh, verges on the discussion you can have afterwards. During the gameplay, I find that it depends very much on the cohort of students, the time of day, um, if they've had dinner or not. Uh, how much they've had to do that day, um, how old the students are, if they're used to it, if they, they're up for it, 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 it's, it varies so much. Um, from my experience, um, teaching the lesson, the best games are the ones where they all get involved and they can have a giggle um, and also challenge each other during the play. So for the relevant terms one, I've seen fights, not, not physical fights, but I've seen people get really quite hit up over it. There's another one where you ask about synonyms the amount of students who don't know what a synonym is, um, which is good because it shows a gap where we, we can then plug. Um, but looking for synonym, cinnamon, um, how many cinnamons are there? Well, there's one, it's a spice. Um, but it, afterwards, it all, it all verges on the discussion as to their learning, because that's when I think most of the learning takes place, is that in, in, in talking about it afterwards and realising that what you've done has value. Um, and realising that other people in your class also may have the same experiences of you and also the same kind of assumptions of their own knowledge uh, and that assumption has been challenged through the game. So it's like playing Trivial Pursuit in the way that you think you know everything but you don't um, and that's a good thing sometimes I think. Other games we play, uh, it is quite hard to get referencing interesting you probably have seen, if you've ever worked in libraries and done referencing stuff, cards with bits of a reference on it that you can then shape to form your reference. Um, so we've got loads of variants of that. But one thing that we do is we'll give the sky them points. So, for example, with these ones, I've got a book worth a point, a journal article, a little bit harder, worth three points. And then I have my cards with the various types of the reference on it and then they just have to make it so it gives it a a little bit more competitive element to the game um, the students then are said right first first team to five points wins whatever and make sure you give them prizes as well um, this especially works if you've already played seek 
and then later on you play another game and you can bring that prize element into it because then they know there's already a prize to be had. They want that themselves and they're given an op another opportunity to do it. So again, most of the learning that comes out of it is again, I think, comes out in the discussions you have afterwards. So we play the game and then we'd, I'd say to them, so what made that easier for you? Oh, well, I, I looked at my referencing guide and it was easy. Well, there you go. That's your learning, isn't it? You've learned that it's easier if you just use the guides that we provide. Um, or And then somebody said, well, I, I knew that that was a book, so I just did the same thing to the book. Oh, so your learning is that references are consistent throughout. So I think what I like most about game-based learning is that it allows the students to teach themselves. Now, I know I'm very, very guilty of being a sage on the stage and talking at people too much, and that is something I'm trying to conquer. Um, you can be a very, very good lecturer and inspire people with your words, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the students that are in your class are going to have the best learning experience. Uh, so what I'm really trying to do is, is focus more on what the students are saying to me rather than what I'm saying to the student. But I think that's something that everybody um, who <laughs> is used to not shutting up and letting other people talk, um, it has to conquer. Um, and I know I'm very, very guilty of that. What else do we do though? Um, we also, within the library, have um, a learning with network technologies element, which I took from the um, Singapore uh, Consul uh, Symposium write-up, which was fascinating and led me to create a very long to, to read list of references from that article. But we have this thing called Lemon Tree. Lemon Tree is a game that the students um, at the University of Huddersfield play. You don't have to, you, you, you're not automatically signed into it, but as users of the library, you can sign up to play Lemon Tree, which then every time you use the library or you use a resource or you borrow a book or you come into a library at lunchtime rather than the morning, you get points. And the points build up and they're all online and they build up to create a little lemon tree hence the name Lemon Tree. Um, some students do it, some don't. One tutor who I've shown the game to really has taken it in his stride and is now saying to students, right, I'm going to look you up, we're having a competition. And you can join on Facebook as well, so the students have the opportunity then to uh, link together on Facebook and, and, and compete to who can come in the library the most. I quite like it because I get points for coming to work. Um, and I haven't grown a lemon yet and I've been working here six months and I've taken a lot of books out and I've looked at a lot of stuff online and I haven't grown a lemon yet so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed. Hopefully by the end of my, <laughs> my time at Huddersfield I'll have grown a lemon. Um, again, it's not so much uh, a learning game but it's more of an incentive to use the library. It also shows the value of using online databases and books and gives you a little bit of a push to maybe um, use different materials that you might not have already or considered useful or valuable to you. It, what I'm trying to say is that I find games really fun in the classroom. Now, of course, again, my caveat, this does not apply to all the students. You can't have a monoculture, teaching to the monoculture approach to teaching. Quite a lot of students will find this approach difficult and hard and will not enjoy it and will not get anything out of it. They want to sit in a room and be talked at by an inspiring lecturer. And I think that we really do need to think about varying up our provision and um, still having that element to, to, to our teaching if it is valued. But I think by inserting a few games every now and then and just varying up it and being a little bit more active and allowing students to learn from each other, I think that you have a more well-rounded lesson, especially when you're teaching information literacy, which as I said before, can be quite dry. And I think that it makes my experience as a, as a teacher um, a lot more enjoyable, um, a lot less pressured as well. And I learn so much more from what the students say in the lessons than I think I would ever do if I was just prepping a lesson and then delivering it. 
So the conversations and the discussions that they have as a result of playing the games bring so much more to my future teaching than if I was just speaking at them and then afterwards them saying, oh, I learned a lot from that. So I would really recommend um, using games within your teaching uh, as a way of spicing things up, but also as, as a development activity for you. Um, thank you for watching. Um, this has been quite a rambly video, um, but it's a subject that um, I'm quite interested in at the moment. So uh, thank you for keeping up with me.